Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to the messy kitchen, you guys. So, the pour that I just did, I probably haven't posted yet, but I will. Um, you will know that I was gonna modify and I forgot when I laid my transfer swipe down, my transfer blue, I forgot and I added way, way too much paint. So, my goal is to modify this time. So one pour ahead of you, this is the puddle, is the puddle that's left over from previous pours today. It just all gets dumped into a cup. Um, we're gonna add a little bit more to it. This is just a pale gray because it is exactly that, drippings from previous pours. Um, I'm gonna explain this for the next couple of videos so that you have followed me for a long time, just ignore me. I'm not on glue, but I'm just trying to clarify a few things for a few people. Um, one, yes, I talk very fast. Apologies. Apologies, apologies for talking fast. I do. Um, and not explaining as I go. So for my base, for my swipes and my blooms, I prefer my base a little bit thicker. So my first puddle of paint, base paint, that I put down always has a good size scoop of Velspar Ultra Deep Base, unless the paint itself is super uber thick. But most of them I find need a little bit of help. So I use my untinted house base that I put in my pouring medium and just a plop of a tablespoon. And that helps thicken it up. That way, when I modify, it helps to hold my lines. And that's the only reason I do it, is because I really, really like crisp, sharp lines, and I can't get that if my base for my swipe or my bloom is not thick. All right, color number one. My paints are also a little bit thicker. Atelier, blue black. Next color is Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold by Golden. This is Scarlet Dry Pigment by Jacquard. This is Golden Ochre. Uh, that's an Atelier paint as well. Move those. And this is uh one of the shift paints one of the flash paints i can't remember what it's called right now but that's what it is all right white cell mix almost gone so my cell mix is a standard amsterdam approximately three to one i don't measure you guys i just dump it in um but if you want approximate measures, three to one, two and a half to one. I always use Amsterdam paint or Atelier. The Atelier paints work really well as well for Cell Activator. Same, same mix as far as ratios. All right. Bad hair. Gonna blow it out. Here we go. Okay, I know you're all looking at this thinking, ew, that's okay. You can think that because we're going to pick it up and transfer it. So I'm just gonna give this a second. I'm gonna blow this out a little bit more. I know hiding under there is all that beautiful, beautiful blue. Okay, so we're gonna put this aside over here for now. And then we're gonna grab our tile that we're going to transfer this bloom to. And that is a four by 16. So my first paint was a mix of Velspar and which is a contractor's grade cheapy cheapy paint in matte. 
and the mat didn't work really well for me the first time I used it, so I mixed it with Canadian Tire Easy Flow in eggshell. And that's it, and pouring medium. This is the same paint. Both of those paints mixed together, only this time I thinned it with water. I don't measure. Um, I apologize in advance for not being able to tell you exactly what it is, but it's really, really fluid. And we're going to spread it out and spin it out, and we're going to tip off all of the excess right now because we don't need it. I put too much on, and so because we're going to transfer our bloom onto this piece, this tile, um, the main weight of our paint is going to be in our bloom. So we're pretty safe to spin this off right now. Here we go. I'm going to dump it right back onto my plastic. If I could learn, ideally, how much paint to put on a tile, I would never have to dump any off. But it doesn't seem to work that way for me. So the other thing I find with the thin paints, and I, I talked to a lady on YouTube about this today, who asked me about bubbles. Um, I hear you. I have the same problem. I have some of my paints. I've done everything that all of the pros tell me to do. Leave your paint open. It's not just for like overnight. It's like for weeks and months. Um, put it into smaller vessels. I don't find any of that works for me. So what I have discovered is thinner paint on the bottom and only what I need for this particular type of pour I can't speak for pores that I've never done. Thin on the keeper tile and, and stretch it right out. So we don't need any excess. Works fine. It's a lot easier to pop the bubbles in thin paint. And I don't have any problems once I do that. Okay, let's do this. So we are, or we were, looking to modify. So I'm going to try not to get crazy heavy handed and let's just go. Okay, so we're just going to let this gently run down our putty knife or our plastic or whatever it is that we're using. I am using a putty knife. There's one. Hmm. Let's scoop up from this side. Okay. So Lots of negative space in between the lines, which allows us to put some modifications on. I'm going to do a quick cleanup, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna give it a really quick spin out, you guys. Just, just a gentle one. All we're doing is really just kind of evening some of this paint out a little bit. All right. So, it doesn't have a lot of contrast in it. And you could quite easily go in with another line of blue. But for now, I think we're just gonna work with what we've got. Okay, I have to take my gloves off, get my kebab stick, clean paper towel, you guys. 
90% of the time I wipe off as I go. So you need a clean towel. Oh goodness, I have a ton of gray paint in my hair. Okay, so let's just pick a line anywhere you want. This is quite pretty, so we're going to maybe pick something that is less pretty. And we're just going to play with that. So let's come in here. So I'm just going in and making some just little lines. They don't have to be even. You can leave the paint on your skewer. I'm taking mine off. I do really like crispy, clean lines for everything I do. Um, I don't like lines that aren't, aren't crisp. Uh, contrasting lines obviously work better. Don't always have contrasting lines, so you just have to make the best of it. And don't, don't hesitate to just go in somewhere where you think, oh, there's no contrast. Who cares? Just do it. Worst case scenario, you hate it. You start again. So, ah, I don't want to wreck that. I, don't know what to, I hate it when there's too many things I don't want to wreck. I don't want to go through the cells, so let's just go up here. all this through and down to there and then you can just take your your tool you can just make tiny wee lines it all adds just incredible interest in your piece um, I'm just gently touching it above I didn't video yesterday. Yesterday morning I got up, the day before I worked out in the garden. It was absolutely beautiful. Short sleeves, I might have videoed, I might have told you this story. Oh, I'm gonna tell you again anyway, because I can't remember if I did or I didn't. Yesterday morning I got up, I thought, oh God, it's cold in the house. I flung open my curtains and it was snowing, these great gobs of snow that looked like pieces of toilet tissue flying from the sky. It was like, oh my God. And, and for the last yesterday and today, it is so cold. It's back to like freezing temperatures. What is going on? All right. Um, all right. Well, let's go in here. Sometimes the only reason I modify is just because I'm not really thrilled with the piece. And so kind of the last stitch effort before I dump it is to modify it. And often pieces that I think are just kind of turn out to be some of the prettiest modified pieces that I've done. So, you know, stretch your paintings, swipe them, add to them, take off. Big gobby bit right there we got to get rid of. Last kick at the cat before you ever dump it. Just keep going. Somewhere right there, there is a gooey bit. Again, little tiny lines. All right, let's grab my fun things, guys. I'll be right back. Oh, here they are. Okay, these handy dandy guys are party kebab sticks. Metal, big ball in the middle, and they have a flat end. And originally the flat end, I kind of looked at it and thought, what am I supposed to do with that? 
and it makes really really cool designs probably not on this piece because I don't have enough contrast but the big balls make really fun swirls so you're just delicately gently putting it down and lifting up as you swirl if it doesn't hold its shape give it 20 minutes come back and twist it again so here's where the base paints become tricky because the base for the swipes has to be thick enough to hold its shape but if i've spun it out a lot there's not a lot of base paint left so it sometimes it becomes a little bit of a dance between me and the paint on who's going to win and that's why i say if it's not holding shape give it 20 minutes and wait till your paints have set up and then come back in and give them another little twist and it will hold for you do not let the paint win you guys it's paint I'd like to have all of these really, really tight. I may have to come back. And pull up, pull up as you go. So it's a really good way to tie in the ends where I pulled the colors together to do the modifying, but you can create really, really cool, just cool edges by just doing exactly that. So let's pick an edge that we know doesn't have a lot of mica powder. Any of the Piggies, Jacquard Pearly X pigments, they don't hold their shape as well. They have a high concentration of mica particles and they break up. So try to pick a tube paint line. Just, you'll just get a nicer consistency, that's all. So I can, I can already tell right here that my base is a little bit stretched out for my liking, but it will be okay. You can really get aggressive with this too. If you don't like the gray, you can you can drag it in. You can push the white in. You can change the entire shape. Don't be afraid to just boss it around, you guys. It's your painting. You have the power. Okay, so that's a lot tighter. Okay, let's try to find a line that'll work so this just makes a really interesting almost like a ladder pattern so let's do this one contrasting patterns obviously will work better contrasting lines and it pinches it kind of pinches the lines together and just adds really unique little embellishments like this is a dry gob of paint off my finger there we go so always wiping off as i go i don't always you've all seen pieces where i don't wipe off and if i'm doing a super floral piece then i leave the paint on the popsicle stick or the skewer and it makes these almost little stamens but i have to be in the floral mood and i'm not sure i'm there tonight So that's really hard for you to see, and I know that. Um, I wish there was more blue up in through here. Let's, uh, I don't want to wreck that line.
Yeah, more blue. More blue would have been really pretty with that clonacridone. What a coulda, shoulda, you guys. All right, well, let's just make some lines up here. You can use this same little thing, the flat edge of this. I can, I use it the same as I did over here with my stick. I just use that. Any, you know what, any little embellishments that you add just creates interest. Kind of gives your eyes places to kind of wander and look. It's like, oh, what's around that corner? And boom, you find something else. Okay, I'm going to give a couple of these another little twist, like this one. All right, my friends, I'm going to love you and leave you right here. Um, thank you for pouring with me in the kitchen tonight, you guys. Um, fun to modify. I'm going to come back in like, say, 20 minutes. I won't add any more, but I am going to just touch up these little curly cues again. Um, so, God, I fell over my chair. Um, just hit them all one more time, half a twist. It'll snug them right up, and then it will just dry beautifully. All right, my friends. Thank you, everybody. You guys are awesome. I appreciate each and every one of you being here with me. Um, the support is amazing. Amazing. All right, my friends. Bye for now.